Hey everyone, today I'm going to do a short video on a short book. That is Olivia by Dorothy Strachey. Uh, I'm not 100% sure how you pronounce her name. I wasn't able to find the pronunciation, so I'm just guessing. I read this book for the monthly book club with Seiji from the channel The Artisan Geek, which is a wonderful channel that I'll link below. I should mention too that we've already had the book club discussion for this book before uh, I even wrote this review. So although I'll try to focus mainly on my own reflections, I do want to at least acknowledge and say thanks to the others who discussed that book with us. The book, as I mentioned, is a short one, just over 100 pages. I read it physically as an ebook at a time when I was pretty busy with other stuff as well and just kind of reading it in between other tasks, but I still finished it in two or maybe three days of occasional bursts, and I'm not that fast of a reader. Anyways though, uh, this book fits into a few categories of interest. British literature, LGBT literature written at a time before that kind of literature was really publishable, coming of age classic of sorts, with even a few other elements uh, that I won't mention further because I want to keep this review as spoiler-free as possible. Strachey, who became Dorothy Busey after her marriage, was close with some members of the Bloomsbury group, uh, which is really a topic for another discussion altogether, but worth looking into if you're not familiar. On her Wikipedia page, it says she was bisexual, and therefore the same-sex romantic attractions described in this book uh, were certainly at least somewhat inspired by personal experiences, uh, even though Strachey eventually would end up marrying a man, Simon Busey. The background of this novel, how it was written, and how it came to be published were all touched upon in an introduction that was found in my version of the novel, which was the Penguin Classics version, published uh, only a few years ago, it seems. So enough on the background. This book is about a teenage girl named Olivia who attends a boarding school in Paris, run by two women with strong personalities uh, in opposition to one another, and Olivia develops a strong romantic attraction, or really even an obsession, with one of those headmistresses, uh, Mademoiselle Julie, one that the headmistress slightly encourages and seems to have encouraged with several other girls as well, each in their own way. Uh, none of that is a spoiler, because it's all pretty much immediately apparent, even from the introduction, uh, but I won't say too much more because discovering the characters in this book will probably be a big part of the fun of it for any readers. And in fact, the discovery process is never really complete, because even by the end of the book, there will be a lot about these characters that remains unsaid. Despite that there's a lot of internal drama at the school throughout the novel, the story is cleverly narrated in a way that keeps it from being specifically about that drama or ever focusing too directly on it, instead remaining focused on Olivia's direct and immediate experiences. Thus, many things are implied but remain unclear how to interpret, so if you're someone like me who enjoys that kind of lasting ambiguity, you'll probably like the way things turn out here. A lot of that, of course, comes from the way it's narrated by our protagonist. Most of us will probably find Olivia to be a pretty self-centered girl who understands her peers and others less from a point of empathy and more from a point of uh, social engineering or, you know, understanding enough about another person to be able to get what she wants with them. Okay, maybe I'm being a little harsh, but maybe not. I guess you'll have to read the book and see for yourself. Interestingly though, this is all written from the perspective of some temporal and emotional distance from the original events, one in which the narrator seems to have possibly learned quite a bit, which is evident from the way she narrates certain events that seem to have a little bit more of a mildly critical attitude towards her younger self uh, rather than a tone of complete obliviousness. I, I think. It's always hard to say about these things, so if you've read the book, I'd be curious what you think about the main character and whether you think she's changed at all uh, at the time of writing. The other thing that really stands out about Olivia, though, the, the novel, uh, is that this narrative is saturated with teenage melodrama. And I don't even mean the actual dramatic events going on to the extent that there are, uh, more just the language the narrator uses to reflect on how utterly wretched and miserable, or how amazing, her life was in certain moments. My first reaction to this was that it often, but not always, is a bit too much. And upon further reflection, I still kind of stand by this, but for every part that I found a bit too much, someone else probably found it relatable. Uh, because there were many moments where I could tell, wow, this is so overdramatic, yet actually a pretty realistic portrayal of what's going on in someone's head at this time of life. Central to the whole emotional current of the novel is an exploration of the disorienting, sometimes invigorating and other times crushing experience of being in love for the first time, or something of the sort, and finding it occupying the whole of your thoughts and experiences in a way that just makes everything else in the world fall into the background. And not just being attracted to someone, but specifically for the very first time, where you're not even sure what it is or how it compares with others' experiences, or even if you're in love at all, because you don't have any prior experiences to compare it with. As the narrator accurately portrays in this novel, it carries a certain sense of vulnerability, along with also a feeling of wonder that 
will really never be replicated in the same way in a future infatuation or relationship, which I have to admit, I think this is a little overstated in importance when it's discussed in the introduction. I mean, it's true that the experience will never be replicated, and I do think that's kind of awesome, but neither will any other future experience. Uh, everything is different in its own way. So to say that this is the only time one is truly in love uh, seems like a serious exaggeration, despite that I think uh, I understand the specific unique qualities of it that someone's really focusing on when they say this in the introduction. And it's not overly romanticized either, or at least not in a categorically positive way. I mean, for all the passages melodramatically extolling the beauty of first love, we see others capturing the obsessive qualities of the narrator's infatuation, ones that most of us, including probably the narrator herself, can see as quite harmful when viewed from a greater distance. And beyond all this, the forbidden female-female attraction also adds another dimension to this whole experience that likely prevented me from fully appreciating it in the way that some will, but Olivia's experience still resonated with me quite deeply in many dimensions. A lot more could be explored about the dynamics between Mademoiselle Julie and Olivia, as well as the other girls and women at the school. Certainly it's a dynamic that most readers will not view through such rosy lenses as Olivia herself did at the time, and many of us to varying extents may find it disturbing how Mademoiselle Julie behaves here. I'm not going to go into that here, but if you have any thoughts on this or have even discussed it in your own video, uh, feel free to leave a link and I'd love to hear what your impressions were. Things towards the end of this book also take a turn in a way that most of us won't really be expecting. In particular, there's a certain tonal shift for a bit. I hesitate to even mention this since I don't like to give spoilers, but I don't think that there is much being spoiled here uh, because I had also heard about this before reading the book myself and I still did not know what people were talking about. I think this, along with the novel's short length, left myself and some others at the end of the book kind of unsure what to make of it all, uh, whether we liked it, how to process the work as a whole. I guess what I'll say is that as I was reading the book, I found it entertaining, but I'm not sure I'd say I particularly liked it. I was thinking, okay, this is an interesting story, but it's not that great. There's nothing too special about it, and it's hard for me to see why anyone would really consider this a classic, other than maybe because of the historical context of uh, having an anonymously written novel with LGBT themes. However, after finishing the book, letting it sink in, discussing it, and then processing it even a bit more, I can actually say that I quite like it, and I would recommend it as a fairly quick and easy read if it sounds like something you might be interested in. Most of the others who I discussed this book with seemed to agree that the novel grows on you upon reflection. Uh, things about the writing or the characters that maybe seemed awkward or clunky at first appear on a second inspection to have clear reasons for being that way, rather than just being mistakes in, in writing or style by the author, and I can't help but admiring the author's style much more than I did when I uh, first read through the book. So if you have a few days, uh, give Olivia a shot and let me know what you think. That's all I've got though for this pretty short review of Olivia by Dorothy Strachey. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you're interested in other reviews on a whole variety of loosely related and even unrelated topics. And until next time, bye and happy reading.